Food Heals Podcast, Episode 71. Most of the radiation is coming that's affecting you is the stuff that's coming out the front that you're holding to your face. So, <laughs> did you just throw your phone? I just threw it across the room. Allison just threw her phone I across it on the room. The couch. Don't worry. Food heals <laughs> I, wish I saw that. But I just it was heard facing it. up at me with no protection. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. Today's guest is Robin Shirley. Robin is the founding president of Take Back Your Health International, a company that hosts internationally attended health conferences and retreats across the U.S. And Susie and I are so excited to be attending the Take Back Your Health conference on April 9th through the 11th in North Hollywood. And I'm super excited to hear Robin speak on superfood nutrition for chronic illness and how to detoxify your brain and body from lead, mercury, and aluminum. Robin has spoken at the University of Virginia Cardiovascular Center, and she will be one of the speakers at the TEDxLA 2016 conference. And we're giving away two tickets to the Take Back Your Health conference here in LA. Stay tuned to find out how to win. And before we get to our interview with Robin, we just have to tell you about today's sponsor. Our sponsor today is the Global Healing Center, where you can get organic, healthy supplements, detox products, and more for 20% off using our discount code, FOODHEALS. And the Global Healing Center is one of our favorite companies because they truly practice what they preach, and their mission and their values are in perfect alignment with ours. While operating a full-time health clinic in 1998, Global Healing Center founder and CEO, Dr. Edward Group, realized that he wanted to reach and help people beyond the walls of his practice. He became obsessed with finding a way to spread the message of health, happiness, and nutrition to the global community. Sounds familiar, huh, Seuss? <laughs> Sounds very familiar. His longing to serve a larger part of the population led him to close the clinic and focus his energy on what he believed would be the future of business and communication as a whole, the internet. Global Healing Center was born with the simple goal of providing helpful, relevant information and support to people around the world who sought to improve their health. That also sounds familiar. Ever since, it has been their mission to bring back good health, positive thinking, happiness, and love to the world. And that's a message we can get behind. We love their products. Check out their skincare line, which includes their luscious, wrinkle-reducing, parfait visage face lotion, and aqua spirit refreshing spray. And check out their line of health and detox kits, which includes their nine-step body cleanse kit, their liver cleanse kit, and they even have a mental wellness kit. I think I need that one right about now. I think there are many people that could use that one. (laughs) (laughs) All this and more at globalhealingcenter.com. Make sure to use the discount code FOODHEALS for 20% off plus free shipping on your purchase. Next up, our interview with Robin. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Today, we're here with an amazing guest, Robin Shirley. Robin is a certified integrative nutrition health coach and a member of the American Board of Drugless Practitioners. Robin grew up with out-of-control systemic inflammation, which her doctors labeled as systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and chronic Lyme disease. At 23 years old, Robin was on track to file for disability and give up on her dreams. But after 17 years of experimentation, research, and education, Robin has personally experienced the power of a therapeutic, healthy lifestyle on reducing pain and inflammation. Robin is finally free from pharmaceuticals and running the company of her dreams. So amazing. Welcome, Robin. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. So I would love to hear about your story and how... You were diagnosed with this systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis at such a young age and chronic Lyme disease, and you're 23 years old. Like, how does that happen? Well, I'm now 27. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, you I look was healthy and beautiful. Yes, Thank you. you do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I was I was diagnosed when I was 11 years old with systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I was missing so much school mm-hmm. that I was having to basically get an exception from my school to pass seventh grade. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, it was out of control inflammation. I was, um, you know, having trouble performing day-to-day functions that everyone takes for granted. And the diagnosis took about, um, I think it was uh, six months almost. I, it might have been a little bit shorter there, but I, I began with a, a rash. It was a red, itchy rash all over my body. There mm-hmm. was a really high spiking fever and some uh, aches and pains like I had the flu. So we went to the doctor. I was at summer camp actually when the onset started and I went to the doctor when I got home and began the general um, testing, diagnostic testing that they put you through for, you know, flu symptoms like um, I was experiencing. And uh, they started me right away on treatment for Lyme disease, which is two weeks of antibiotics. Mm. And because that's, you know, I was in the woods, I was in Virginia, I was at summer camp, yeah. and that's what they would have thought it was with the rash and the fever and everything. Yeah. So, uh, so I started the antibiotics, but after a week, the test came back negative. So they took me off of the antibiotics and they said, it's okay, you don't have Lyme, and we're going to proceed with trying to diagnose this. Right now, we're not sure what it is, but we'll send you to um, some specialists and we'll figure it out. Mm. So I was kind of tossed around to some different specialists over the next couple of months and finally landed at Johns Hopkins with a diagnosis of systemic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And, and you're 11. Yeah. Unbelievable. You're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> You're a baby. Well, I mean, I, I have to just put it out there. There are babies, literally babies that are diagnosed with this disease as well. Wow. So I feel I feel lucky that it was, um, you know, I was a little older and I was able and to handle it emotionally. Were you experiencing pain in your joints? I mean, that's a chronic sign of rheumatoid arthritis, right? Right, right. So by the time I was diagnosed, finally, the disease had progressed. The symptoms had become more severe and it was um, more systemic. So I was experiencing inflammation in the lining of my heart, which is also a symptom of JRA. And I was the rash had spread, and the fatigue was worse, and there were um, you know high spiking fevers, 103, 104, and then the joint pain. And mm-hmm. so it had spread, you know, started in my knees, it spread to my feet, and my hands, and my wrists, and everything. So, so yeah, I was sent to a rheumatologist, and they put me on. Um, uh, I believe it was about eighteen milligram, eighteen hundred milligrams of ibuprofen about 60 milligrams of prednisone, and then they started me on methotrexate as well. Oh my God. It was a lot of, it was a lot of medication. On your small frame, you could barely handle this, I'm sure. And how did you feel on the meds? Well, the, the ibuprofen, I think it was upsetting my digestion a little bit. I remember from that moment on, I didn't have um, the same digestion. Mm-hmm. And then the methotrexate really gave me a lot of nausea, uh, nauseousness. And then... Um, my hair actually started falling out after about a year on it, oh and my God. Uh, which is a common side effect of that medication. And then I didn't lose everything; I just lost about half of it. And and I had to switch to the um, injection instead of the oral because it was making me so nauseous. But uh, I was on and off of all of those medications up and down all the time, and did different drugs um, like Orencio is a common one for JRA and. Remicade is one. I I never tried that one, but they were always pushing me to go on that one. And then um, Enbrel was the other one that I was on. So they're all very common for JRA. So it gave you these side effects, but did you feel what, you know, the the aches and the pains and all the others? Was it helping any of the symptoms? Once I got diagnosed and I got on some of the medications, the inflammation was kept under control enough that I was able to get through middle school and high school. And, um, but it wasn't without a price for sure. What happens with JRA? And this is an autoimmune disease. So I'm sure that most people are familiar with this at this point, like one in four adults have autoimmune or something crazy. Which is insane. And it didn't used to be like this. So we have to look at our lifestyle and go, what is causing this? Right, right. Which I have a really interesting perspective on. So please ask me in a few minutes. Oh, Oh, I can't wait to hear that. (laughs) Um, Okay, so I was telling you about the drugs um, and did they help? Yes, but what happens with these medications, the point of putting anyone on medication who has autoimmune disease is to suppress the immune system so that it stops attacking healthy cells, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. So it was suppressing my immune system and I started to get upper respiratory infections more often. And by my senior year of high school, I actually got mono, which is common for Mm -hmm. high schoolers. Were you kissing? (laughs) (laughs) She's blushing. (laughs) This is a really embarrassing uh, way oh, to, you were kissing someone. I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't but I, I I picked up the wrong water bottle 
in art mm. class. Really? It was the water bottle of another girl who had mono. She was kissing boys. Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> and your immune system was so down that it couldn't fight that because you were suppressing it yourself. Right, right. I, I, mean, I was out of school for about, I believe it was about not, like 90% of my third uh, quarter of wow. senior year. So I had to like meet my AP Gov teacher in Starbucks and like relearn everything. And they had to excuse me from a whole like quarter of art class and PE and, and science and everything. Oh and so, yeah, it was pretty uh, bad, the infection. And I attribute that to having the being, being on the medications and everything. And then that happened again in college with a bronchitis and that lasted almost a year and I had to go through like a lot of physical therapy to open up my chest and my breathing again and then the third time it happened was um, out of school after I had left school and I had just a normal strain of um, it was a staph infection it was just a very normal strain of staph it wasn't the super bug or anything and like the hospital cultured it and tested it and I was in the hospital for six weeks with staph in my throat I couldn't wow. I couldn't eat I couldn't swallow or anything they had to drain it and keep a tube in there to drain the infection out and they had to go in twice to get it out and all of this just because these medications are suppressing your immune system so it's much crazy. yeah yeah it's pretty bad the thing is is that I started with a natural lifestyle from the beginning I was really lucky to have parents who were supportive and they had an open mindset and my mom and I started juicing vegetables and fruits like the day I was diagnosed, literally. We wow. Yeah. That's like Susie's family, but yeah, not like the, mine. <laughs> yeah, I was born into it, actually. Oh, really? That's Yeah, great. my mom was juicing since the 70s. So. Oh, great. Yeah, but so, so once you were diagnosed, your mom was like, let's do mm-hmm. this. It wasn't something you guys already did, but... Mm-hmm. found out about it and decided to do it for you. Right, right. So we were encouraged by, you know, family friends to look into things and go see certain healers. And, you know, I went to an acupressurist who also did acupuncture, but I think I was, you know, a little freaked out. So I opted for the acupressure. <laughs> and I went to a massage therapist. I went to um, a natural health institute in Washington, D.C. They did all sorts of things. They tested me for food allergies and they did the color therapy and they did um, um, like they looked into my family tree and looked at family members who were ill who wow. might have like like they call them family like miasms that they pass down these um, patterns of disease to other family members and then they, we had someone come in and look at the electromagnetic frequency in our house that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like back in 2000 before it was a before it was trendy yeah, yeah. I was just talking to someone <laughs> who actually reversed her MS and she did many, many things, including going to Germany. But she had, was it called dousing or do, a dousing? Oh, yeah. No, I've they put a that. dousing rod in. A dousing rod, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they would go around her shop and stuff like that. And did they find any kind of EMFs, like any big fields? Well, we. Um, EMFs are electromagnetic frequencies, by the way. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah. And they'd come not just from your cell phones and, and cell towers, which is what the big, you know, talk is about now, but they come from, you know, your all your electronics plugging into the wall. They come from your washer and dryer, your fridge, and your... Like, I'm sure the room that we are in is very <laughs> toxic, just oh, we're being, being honest. we're being vibrated on so many levels. <laughs> we have three microphones, three computers, multiple cell phones, so we're not in the best shape here. But in general, that is something to be mindful of in your home. Right. But go right. on. A note on that, I was listening to another interview with Dr. Lee Cowden, who mm-hmm. I'll talk about in a minute because he was one of the instrumental doctors in, in recovering my, my me from Lyme disease. But um, he'll be speaking in one year at the Take Back Your Health conference. So I'm, I'm already planning that far ahead. But he was awesome. talking, um, yeah, he was talking about EMFs and how um, they're finding that it's it's kind of, it's changing the the vibration of our, our the bacteria, the, the beneficial in our, in our stomach and oh our bodies God. and probiotics people sorry <laughs> don't put your probiotics next to your cell phone basically because oh my they're, God. What they're a good being point. affected what a good point this or next to your water okay, this is on. something we never talked about on the show but I, know. I a long time ago um made was made hyper aware of this because someone sold me something for my cell phone which was on a cell phone a while ago, but it was supposed to neutralize the effects of it, at least on your body. I had one on my old cell phone too, but I don't have it on my new one. (laughs) That's what Uh this is. That's what this is. Is that what that is? It's a defender shield, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, this was just a little chip. And mm-hmm. it was supposed to at least not affect your electro, yeah. your bioelectrical system. And they tested it with 
a machine that tested acupuncture points. No, oh my God, this is so interesting. Tell us what is on your cell phone right now. Okay, this is a, a cell phone case and it's made by a company called Defender Shield. And this, the man who started the company used to work for Bell Laboratories, which is, as you may or may not know, is the company that was founded by, I believe, Alexander Graham Bell back a long time ago when, mm-hmm. you know, they were developing all this electric, right. electronic technology. And well, I remember my cell phone company used to be Bell South when I lived in the South, like, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, so there's still, you know, there's still a company and they're still developing um, communication technology. And this man um, left the company, started his own, and he now is producing these devices that go onto your phone and they block up to 90% of the radiation coming out of the front of the phone. So this here, this um, thing over the top, there's no protection in the back. Most of the radiation is coming that's affecting you is the stuff that's coming out the front that you're holding to your face. So <laughs> did you just throw your phone? I just threw it across. The room. Allison just threw her phone. <laughs> I landed on the, the couch. Don't worry, Food Heals Nation. <laughs> I saw that, but I it was facing it. up at me with no protection. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, they make they make some other stuff like a, a lap pad when you put your laptop on your pad on your lap. I have heard of them actually. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of them. Do you do you know what's in the case that does it? Um, it's got to be some sort of toxic metal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we need a case for your case. To exactly. It's toxic it, metal. It's, you know, there's there's necessary evils in the world, and I've decided I need a cell phone right. at this point in my life. Yeah. yeah. So, and I've got to talk on it hours a day sometimes for this conference business, so I just, you know, i got to do something about do you know it. Let me show you guys what else I have. Okay. <laughs> While you're doing that, I went, oh. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love the... Okay, Food Heals Nation can't see me, but I have this like pop phone and it plugs into my cell phone and then it translates so I can hear. It's like an old school looking telephone. I call it a pop phone. Oh, pop. Okay. That's what the brand was called. It was called a pop phone when I bought it. I don't know. I'm sure there's many out there right now, but I plug it into my phone and then I don't get the EMFs when I talk on it. So um, you can borrow it for I the have news for me. Or, you do. Right? I love this. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, Susie, I've got to get one. Say? Well, I was going to say, um, and I remember Bill Maher was talking about this at one point on his show, um, where even the little earbuds, people think they're safe if they use their earbuds. They're not. It still travels up the wire, mm-hmm. the EMFs. So the best way to do it, if you're going to be speaking on your phone at length, is to use your speakerphone. Right, right. right. It, the yeah. further away it gets from your body, even though it's in your hand or whatever, you know, the further away the the frequency drops. I think what is it, five or six feet? If you're away from it, five or six feet, it drops immensely. Right, uh, right. But that's why it's so important to have something like that on your phone, especially for men. They put it in their pockets. Women have it in their purse. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm freaking out. Okay, we got to do a whole show about this, but let's go back to your story, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're doing. We, we interrupted yes. you. You're doing. Uh, the EMF testing in your house, you're doing juicing. Right, right. right. Yeah, we, I mean, what happened was we just kind of went, we we were desperate, like we were just, you know, whatever people suggest, we're going to try. And so... Um, and did your mom have a, have any kind of faith that you might get better? Like, was that, or were they just kind of like, this is what we're living with, but we want to make you feel better? Right. Well, you know, this was almost two decades ago at this point, and... This was before like childhood cancer was a really big deal. Like this was before kids were getting diagnosed with autoimmune disease in such high numbers and mm-hmm. schools didn't know what to do. Um, doctors didn't know what to tell parents. And um, and so we didn't know what to expect at all. We couldn't like, there was, as far as they knew, rheumatoid arthritis never went away. It was just something that you got in your mid you know, to late 50s, 60s, 70s. And then they, and then you just had it the rest of your life. So. Um, so they didn't know what to tell us, and we didn't know what to expect, but all we knew was that we could potentially reduce the symptoms if we were healthier. And so that was the direction we went. And um, yeah, we tried all these different different things, different therapies, and um, nothing, nothing worked because we didn't do the right things. Mm-hmm. And that's because I didn't know I didn't understand autoimmune disease. I didn't understand human anatomy. I didn't understand how the immune system worked. I didn't under, understand how detoxification worked. And so it took me about 10 years to catch up and learn all that. And now you can go read it. Now you can yeah. go, you know, you can ask me, I'll tell you. You can ask people and they'll tell you how to do it. But I had to kind of like figure out my own path. 
and then once I once I fit a lot of the puzzle pieces together, it became I started seeing improvements, like reaching huge milestones in my healing, and it and it happened very quickly. That's amazing. So, how long did it take for you to go from feeling very bad to feeling your optimal self health? Um, well, th- so my diagnosis uh, age eleven. Um, by halfway through college, I was at an all-time low, and I was in a sorority, like drinking way too much, eating way too much gluten and dairy and everything. As we do in college. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I loved it. I had a great time. Um, but halfway through my sophomore year, I just said, you know, this, like, this is ridiculous. I cannot keep doing this. Yeah. It's getting worse. And so I, I went online. I just said, like, I did all these crazy Google searches, you know, curing rheumatoid arthritis, like what not to eat when you have rheumatoid arthritis, all these things. And I came up with this website that just gave a list of like 10 foods that you must not eat if you have rheumatoid arthritis. And um, I had like heard of gluten-free and dairy-free before Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, soy-free, but this was... um, this was egg free, gluten free, dairy free, soy free, corn free, chocolate, yeast, meaning like alcohol and vinegars, mm-hmm. and then um, and then red meat mm-hmm. and a few others. There's gotta have been. Did I say soy? Yes. And then sugar was probably like cane yeah. sugar, and then I'm sure there was one other in there. But anyway, so this was um, at this point. This was about ten years ago, I guess, and I uh, I eliminated them all. During my uh, sum- the summer before sophomore year. That's amazing. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that's hard for people to do. Good for you. It was it was uh, essential. I mean, I was not doing well, and and so I did. I I eliminated it, and I within a month or two, I was almost symptom free. Within wow. a month. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So. So please keep listening to what I'm about to say. If you're like, okay, I got the answer. Now I don't have to listen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't the whole picture. So, so anyways, I, I went back to, to school. I was at Virginia Tech. Um, this was, cool. yeah, awesome school. I, I loved it. Um, this was uh, my, I did my elimination diet four months after, or like three months after the shootings at Virginia Tech. So, so we were all coming back together after, you know, the shootings happened in April. We kind of all dispersed. They cut school short. We went home. Coming back, um, Dave Matthews put on this amazing concert for everyone in Lane Stadium. And my sister came down. It was on her birthday. So I said, I'll give my free guest ticket to you. You come down, hear your favorite band. And, um, and so I got, uh, I went to Annie's Natural Foods. That was the only <laughs> health food store in Blacksburg. And we got um, like a, a gluten-free, dairy-free brownie, frozen brownie, like packaged cake thing. And and I warmed it up and I put candles in it and we sung her happy birthday. And then, and then we had a couple beers and then we went to the concert. And within like three hours... My rash was back. My fingers were swelling up and getting like you know hard to bend mm-hmm. and everything. And then by the next morning, I was like all swollen in my face, and I just felt really shitty. Yeah. And so it was, um, it was uh, either the beer, the yeasty beer, yeah. or it was the eggs in the brownie, or it was the chocolate, because mm-hmm. those were the only things that I had added back in. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, I said, this is, there's something to this food thing. Yeah. And I tried it for the rest of the semester. Um, I tried it for the rest of the year. By the following year, I was, I was back to where I was before the elimination diet. I wasn't able to keep up with it. And I said, um, I was at, you know, some, uh, fraternities formals in South Carolina at the beach. And, and I was like, hitting another all-time low and I was watching um Bravo channel Real Housewives of Atlanta (laughs) and and I was like in my hotel room everyone else was out like drinking having a good time and I was just so depressed and I said what am I doing like here this is ridiculous because I'm so sick that I can't even enjoy this like what's the point and so I I said in that moment I have to go home and I have to work on my health and I told my mom, I, you know, I went to visit them a couple weekends later and I told them and she said, yes, I support you. And so I came home mm-hmm. and, uh, within like four months I had enrolled at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition wow. and, cool. and I started really committing to this lifestyle. So it took me, um, I guess it was, I guess it was ten, uh, eight, nine years 
for me to mess around with stuff before I said, okay, like there's, I had experienced enough positive healing yeah. from nutrition and holistic health that I said, I have to commit to this fully. So, so I went home and I studied it and I learned a lot more. I did a lot of self-study reading and experimenting and I, um, and I figured, I figured out a lot of new stuff. What dedication. Yeah. You know, you left everything to do this, to fight for your health and to figure out what you could do for yourself. That's amazing. Like that's, I think that's so extraordinary. And you did it at such a young age. I mean, you had, you, I mean, you were faced with kind of no other choice. I mean, like, because your own desire for feeling better was staring you at the face, but in the Mm -hmm. face, but like, we applaud you. We applaud you. We haven't done this in a while, Allison. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, it was it was a hard decision because you're deciding to put, you know, ev- like I grew up in a community where college was everything. Of course. And you're putting that on hold. And college is the time of your life. It's yeah. really hard not to do what everyone else is doing. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really hard. Yeah. Yeah. You went home and you were learning and did you, you were- Did you quit? You quit school for, you put school on hold. Yes. um, Went to school for the integrative nutrition. Right, right. So at that point, I didn't know what I was doing. I just, you know, Virginia Tech allows you to go on a leave of absence of up to seven years. And so I did that. I told them I may or may not come back. I went to, went home. I enrolled in IIN. And what's IIN? Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Yeah. And, and within like four months of, of classes starting, I was, teaching my own cooking classes out of my parents house that's so cool they they were so supportive of you starting your own business and the curriculum at that school is like three pillars one is nutrition obviously the second one is um career like professionalism studies and the third one is coaching and counseling Mm -hmm. so you get a like a well-rounded approach to working with people and starting your own business in the nutrition field and so I listened to one of the lectures and it was basically saying like, start now, like why, why wait? Mm-hmm. If you don't start now, you're going to graduate and you're not going to have anything and you're going to not have the support either of your classmates. So I thought that's very smart. And I sent out invitations to all my mom's friends to come to my first cooking class. <laughs> Aww, that's and awesome. Yeah. So I started, I started with like three healthy soup recipes and they loved it and they told their friends and so it kind of grew from there and I started teaching these cooking classes and uh, and then I started promoting outside of my friend group into the community and then I started to do things like a yoga retreat one weekend cool. and um, yeah so I kind of kept it small I did one-on-one sessions like a few of them helping people with their own nutrition and at the same time I was you know helping myself right. and you know feeling like this is a good career for me because it's keeping me dedicated to that lifestyle. And so the career and my health happened simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Take back your health was really about me taking back my health and building a lifestyle that I wanted around that and supporting myself through it. I find that a lot of people in this industry, in the holistic health industry, in, you know, diet, diet coaching, health coaching, have some sort of personal story just like that. I mean, yours is pretty personal. Um, mine, I became a massage therapist because yeah, I, I injured my back when I was 16. You know, Allison had experience with family members dealing with cancer. So I feel like it's, there's always something that pulls you in yeah. that makes you go, hold on, what else can I be doing here? Well, it make, it creates the desire to help because once you help yourself or you help someone else or you realize the possibilities, all you want to do is share that knowledge with others. You know, and that's why you do the conference, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, let me elaborate on that because I think this this is a good time to explain what what my mission is really and why, um, you know, anyone who's started their own business or anyone who's gone through any, you know, adversity in life knows that things can get rough and you lose your motivation, um, which happened many, many times. Oh, yeah. It's not an easy ride straight up, 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 up. It's like up, down, up, down, up, down. You know, it's a ride. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, well, let me uh, just put out another like big one for you guys. After the Virginia Tech shootings, there's going to be some heavy topics in this interview. But um, bring it. All right. So, well, I, I, I talk about this openly now because I know so many people are dealing with it. But I think it was like, like the a couple of weeks before I decided I have to leave school and I have to come home. I was driving home visiting my family. I did that a lot. We, they lived close. And 
I was driving on the road and I just thought, like, could I kill myself if I ran off the road and hit that tree right now? Yeah. Like, I, I, I literally had those thoughts. And I don't think I ever would have acted on it, but because I don't think it would have worked. But I just thought, like, I really don't like my life right now. Yeah. Like, this sucks. I Like, this, like something has to change yeah. or I'm, like, I don't want to live anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think so many people are, are dealing with that. And it makes you... Um, it, it 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 makes it hard to not only interact with people and and engage in life in a way that you're meant to be able to which is building healthy relationships and enjoying other people and spending time with them and you know learning who you are and learning who others are and and just loving and and receiving love and and you can't do that if you're that sick you can't do that if you're depressed you can't do that if you're in chronic pain it's such a it's such a sad way to live and I knew that there were other people living that way I'm not the only one and if I can fix myself other people need to be fixed too and then I, I started to see the bigger picture too all of this you know dis-ease that we're dealing with globally and if we can you know work on ourselves individually it's really going to help us become more productive and positive people to help heal globally so I think that it has to start with each of us individually and we can't fix what's happening globally if we are feeling as sick as I was feeling, which I know so many, yeah, so many people. So, so that's, that's really the, the ultimate goal is just kind of making everyone feel like life doesn't suck so much. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good mission. Um, I, I, I can totally empathize. I've had the same thoughts myself, um, for different reasons. But I remember driving in Santa Monica. I was living over there at the time, and I was just thinking, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. I just don't want to live anymore. And I, and I thought, God, that's not me. That's, I've never had those thoughts before. And I, I wasn't going to act on it. I had no desire to act on it. But I started having those thoughts and got into therapy ASAP yeah. and continued to work on myself and just realized, you know, I think it's human for most people to have that thought at some point. At some point. When at they're some in their darkest time or for something sure. terrible is going because on. Because as you said, life is not a 45 degree angle to just go up and up and up. Sometimes you have bumps in the road and yeah. go up and down. And and it's just a thought. You know, the, the, I think the real problem is, is when people really try to plan it, right? I used to think I was my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I thought if I had bad thoughts, uh, that that is me. It's just a thought. And you're going to have 70,000 more in a day. And thank God you didn't act on it thank god i didn't you know it's like you're right you know um that's not how we have a healthy world a healthy society and and sometimes people feel that way and then they can pull themselves out of it all right we'll be right back with robin's tips for what she eats today how to be healthy and we're going to talk all about the conference take back your health hey this is john lee dumas of entrepreneur on fire and you're listening to the food heals podcast where you'll find the tools to become a hotter healthier happier you we'll be right back with allison melody and Susie hardy food heals nation if you are looking for the highest quality supplements the most luscious organic skincare and a brand name that you can trust to be free from toxic chemicals look no further than the global healing center I have been using their products for years. Their Parfait Visage face lotion literally makes my skin look younger. And it comes in a beautiful bottle, so it is perfect as a gift as well. And the Oxy Powder Colon Cleanse Capsules are the most powerful detox supplements I have ever used. They get everything out, and they don't leave you feeling full or uncomfortable. The mission of the Global Healing Center is to bring back good health, positive thinking, happiness, and love. And they want to help you realize that your body is a self healing mechanism. Well, I couldn't agree more. So I've teamed up with Dr. Group and the Global Healing Center to bring you a discount exclusive to Food Heals listeners. Go to their website at globalhealingcenter.com, pick out the items you want, and use the discount code FOODHEALS, all one word, for 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. 20% off is a great deal, Food Heals Nation. I love their products, and I know you will too. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with Robin Shirley. After coaching hundreds of patients with chronic Lyme disease, autoimmune disease, and depression throughout her nutrition protocol, Robin launched Chronic Lyme Nutrition. Robin is also the founding president of Take Back Your Health International, 
a company that hosts internationally attended health conferences and retreats across the U.S. And we will be at her Take Back Your Health conference on April 9th through the 11th in North Hollywood. So meet us there. Come hang out with Susie and I. And you can win two tickets. So Robin, what do they have to do to win two tickets to the Take Back Your Health conference? Well, let's see. So we're giving away a pair of tickets. And so if you'd like to enter to win, you can go to our conference website, which is takebackyourhealthconference.com and scroll to the bottom of the website and there will be a pink button that says subscribe to our list. And that's the first thing you have to do. Yes, step one, subscribe. (laughs) Step two is to go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash tbyh conference or just search in the search bar for our page take back your health conference and comment on one of our posts so that's step two is to leave a comment and what is it the best comment wins yes so (laughs) Susie and i will be reviewing the comments we're the judges we're the judges so what you have to do is screenshot that Facebook comment, email us at info at foodhealsnation.com. Once you've joined her mailing list and once you've left your comment and our favorite comments, we're going to choose who gets the two tickets. Now, if you live in LA, you can just drive there. If you don't live in LA, we're not paying for your plane tickets. You've got to buy, buy your plane tickets in your hotel yourself, but we will give you two tickets to the conference. So thank you, Such Robin. a great giveaway. Yes. And we'll be there so we can hang out. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's go back a little bit into your story. And I know there's so much we haven't gotten to, and I want to hear about some of um, your advice on how to detox your body and your brain from lead, mercury, aluminum, things like that. But, um, you know, I just want to prize you for how far you've come because I feel like there are listeners out there who could hear this and go, well, I could never do what she did, right? But you can. Absolutely. I I was just saying when we were taking a break and Allison told me I had to say it on air because it was good that uh, (laughs) that um that what you were saying right before we took the break about having dark thoughts and and you reached you reached a bottom where you said to yourself I have to do something or I don't want to be here anymore I don't want to live like this anymore and that that's really brave to say because you're sitting here in our studio. You're successful. You have your own business. You're young. You're you're lovely. You are lovely (laughs) um and I would think that it's it's really brave of you to say that, to share that with our audience as well as important because people may look at you and think, oh, I can't do what she did when they're in their darkest hour. And I think it's really important for people that are in their own personal darkest hour to know that others that are successful have gone through it, have seen the light at the end of the tunnel to hear that. And I made a, a reference to, I saw the, the Steve Jobs movie, the newest one, the yeah. um, Aaron Sorkin movie. Yes. And... And I knew Steve Jobs' story before, but it really made me realize how, like, one of the mo- one of the few people that actually changed the world with what they created or helped create. And he had been fired from his own company and mm-hmm. had faced major downfall and came back stronger than ever and changed the world. So that's just an example. You're another example. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, it's really important for people to hear that that life is not always, like I said, a forty-five degree upward angle. Right. Like everything should go perfectly, <laughs> as I used to think it should be. Right, right, yeah. No, you you watch that Steve Jobs movie, and you're like, wow. Even after he became a success, he had major, major failures. And it's important to remember that you look. You, if you go to my website, you see a nice, happy face of myself up at the top. But you know, I still have my bad days. Yeah, I'm sure I'll have many more failures. I mean, it's this, you can apply this to business, to health, I'm sure to multiple other things that people are dealing with, but you go up and you go down, you go up and you go down. Ideally, we're going mostly up with a little downs, but sometimes something, life is going to hit you with something and you can't, you have no control over that. And so you have to step back and go, all right, how am I going to handle this with all, all that I got? you know, with love, not with judgment, not with anger, not with scarcity thinking, you know, to move forward and move through it because these are all lessons. Every mistake is a lesson. Every disease is an opportunity to see what's going on in your life and go, what do I need to change today to make myself have a better tomorrow? And so I just think your story is like a shining example of that in health and in business, you know? Thank you. Yeah, I hope so. That is the goal. Yeah. So tell us about the Take Back Your Health Conference. Who are the speakers? What are we going to learn about? 
Okay, so so every year I look for speakers who are who have number one either taken back their own health, or number two are helping other people take back their health. And this is really important to me because I'm interested in getting to the real solutions and I don't care to have people on my stage who are there to sell things. There are people on the stage who also have products, but I'm not a conference where we're selling things from stage all day. This is about um, real serious people taking back their health and, and helping others do it. And so I talk about topics I had mentioned earlier that the nutrition was a big piece of of taking back my own health but there were other pieces that I had to find and put together on my own and I I wasted I I wouldn't say I wasted but I spent a lot of my parents money and my own money on therapies that were masking symptoms and helping me feel better from some of the symptoms but they weren't therapies that were solving the real cause So as you go along your journey, you're going to run into people who have therapies and solutions for you that are going to cover the symptoms and make you feel a little bit better, like put a Band-Aid on. But at Take Back Your Health, we're talking about the causes. Mm -hmm. And so that you will, every year that you come back, or even after coming one time, you're going to actually know how to stop the fire from, you know, if it's inflammation, if it's addiction, if it's um, depression, if it's heart disease, if it's cancer, you're going to actually find um, out what's causing this and what needs to be done so that you can stop the fire, so to speak. And, um, and so when I, uh, when I put together the conference, it's people who have really interesting information. Like, for example, you guys are, you know, talking about the heavy metals. I'm going to be speaking on that at the conference. Um, heavy metals has become a big issue in the news lately because of the Flint water issue crisis yeah. that's happening. It's horrific. It is. And, um, but the unfortunate thing is that it's not the only place in the country where that's happening. I know. Um, it's, it's just, just the, the only, worst. <laughs> it's just the only one where it's been discovered and it's now in the news. Right. And that's the worst you know, because you got to test your water yourself because unfortunately the powers that be aren't doing it for you. Well, the, the interesting thing, I looked into this um, in December. I, I wrote a long blog post on the differences between tap water, spring water, filtered water. I reviewed mm-hmm. a bunch of filters. I reviewed a bunch of t- um, different cities, tap water, and put my recommendations for how do you get healthy drinking water? Because there's all this stuff about alkaline water. Like, really, is that what you need? Like, what like what is what kind of water do we need to be drinking? Right. And I found on the Environmental Working Group website a place where you can search your zip code and find out what exactly is in your water. Yes, that is a great resource just say it again environmental working group <laughs> mm-hmm. environmental working group ewg.org i think it's dot org um and you can also type in your products and you can see what their score yeah is. they have a skin oh, deep one site yes, too indeed. for skin care so they do water and they do skin care yes. and they probably do a couple other things but um i was looking at the water site and it's a little difficult to find the search bar it's really tiny up in the top right but you type in your zip code and you what i found is that of the American population's tap water is contaminated with higher than the legal health limits of lead. And and arsenic. And and chloroform gas. Mm -hmm. Chloroform gas. And also um, fluoride. Right. I don't know about the percentages of those. I don't know if that's as high as 30%, but I know that lead and chloroform are. And those two in the... It's hyperlinked on the EWG website. You can click on the two chemicals and you can find out what exactly it is and what it does. Both of them coincidentally cause spontaneous abortion in women. Oh, my God. And what is one of the most serious issues happening with women in their 20s and 30s right now? Infertility and, 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 and miscarriages. Miscarriages, yeah. Stop drinking your tap water. Agreed. Stop well, drinking your tap water. I don't know anyone Filter in L.A. It. that drinks their tap water. Oh, do you? I do. I do. In L.A.? Uh, yeah. Oh. I saw an, a meme on um, on on the internet the other day that was Kristen Wiig making a really gross face, like she was grossed out. And the meme said, "This is what I'm I'm like when someone offers me tap water." <laughs> <laughs> it was no, but I do. I know people who still drink tap water. It's it's remarkable. Oh my god! Well, you have to get a high quality filter for your tap water, or you have to have water delivery. Like you got to figure out what your options are, but you also don't want to be drinking bottled water. Which makes water. me so angry because yeah, I remember ridiculous. I was born in 1977, and I remember drinking water out of my backyard hose. Yeah, me and while too. it tasted like plastic because it was a plastic hose, <laughs> it was fine. And I remember drinking tap, and this was in New York. I remember drinking my tap water, and not often. I didn't drink water often, but unless I was playing sports, but like it was fine. And, and to think that our 
the state of our our water systems and the fact that like we have you know it should be a we should be able to turn on the tap and drink it no because that's what it used to be it it used to be that way and ideally it would be that way but three hours from where we're sitting right now in the eastern Coachella Valley, their water is completely contaminated with arsenic and they have so many health problems. But the problem is they're an unincorporated community. So the government says, I don't have to do anything. So only way to to heal, to heal fix their water is these independent organizations, nonprofits, get funded to go in and build Aaron water. Aaron Brockovich. Build, we need Aaron Brockovich. I know, Aaron Brockovich. She's living right down the street in Santa Monica. I know, because, well, right now we have the other Porter's Ranch issue going on where they're spewing gas. Um, but anyway, so I did a documentary on this, and... I worked on one and it's for internal use. So you're not going to see it on Netflix or anything. But these people, they have psoriasis all over their body. They're developing chronic debilitating diseases. And they are the farm workers that are feeding California. And, and the country, and the country. My dad told me, I, if he listens to this, he's going to be embarrassed. But <laughs> he said, he, you know, he didn't want me to move to L.A. And he got very angry. He said, I have to do it, Dad. It's, it's the next step for mm-hmm. me and my company. And, and he's, you know, throwing out the, the earthquake argument sure. and, <laughs> and, and the, the drought and everything. And I said, Dad, do you buy lemons? Do you buy limes? They come from California, you know, right? Mm-hmm. And I, he said, yeah. And I was like, you're contributing to the drought problem in California when you do that, you know? Yeah, you don't think about that. People don't make that connection at all, you know? Um, so I hear what you're saying. So we're giving away two tickets, so a pair of tickets. So how can Food Heals Nation get tickets? Now, we're only giving tickets away to the conference. Susie and I will be there so you can hang out with us. We're not giving you your plane ticket or your hotel. So if you live in L.A., it's a great thing to apply to. If you don't, just know if you win the tickets, you got to pay for your Pay for your way, but how can they win those tickets? So first step is to sign up for the Take Back Your Health newsletter. Um, The website to do that is takebackyourhealthconference.com. And scroll to the bottom. There's a pink button there where you can subscribe to the list. And step two is to comment on one of our Facebook posts. So you can visit our Facebook page. Just search on Facebook for Take Back Your Health Conference. Love that. Okay, and then you are going to screenshot your Facebook comment. Susie and I are going to pick our favorites, send it to info at foodhealsnation.com, and our favorite Facebook comment will win two tickets. Yeah, I'm so excited you guys are going to be there. Yeah. So are we. <laughs> we'll hopefully get some interviews on site for the podcast and tell everyone where they can find you online, stalk you. All right. Well, takebackyourhealthconference.com. At the top of that website, it's attached to my blog, which is um, also clubtbyh.com. You can join and get discounts on um, tickets, consultations with me, recordings from the conference, and read my blog. I do a lot of um, you know information like I was sharing today. And then um, that website's also attached to our retreat website. So I'm leading nutrition retreats and um, in Palm Springs and in Outer Banks in North Carolina. Ooh, I want to come to both of those. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. They're going to be it's amazing food. I'm putting you know all my culinary expertise, <laughs> which isn't you know professional, but man, I love love cooking, and I'm so excited to cook for everyone at these retreats. There's gonna be amazing options for every dietary need i'm doing i'm putting like everything out on the table vegetarian vegan paleo whatever you eat it's going to be there and it's going to heal your body so yeah cool thanks so much for being here thanks robin that's our show thanks for listening for all the show notes go to foodhealsnation.com slash 71 We'll be back next time with part two of our interview with Robin, Robin Shirley from the Take Back Your Health Conference. We've got lots of good stuff coming up. You can win tickets. You know what to do. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.